everyone, and welcome again to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you again for joining me today. On today's episode, you guessed it, Topaz, Studio 2. Today, we're looking at the Dual Tone Filter. It's a really nice uh, filter for tinting your images. It works with highlights and shadows, so we can tint our highlights a certain color, and we can tint our shadows a certain color. And it's also good... Uh, for tinting black and white images. You know, if you want like a sepia tone type image or more blue tones or whatever, you might have dual colors. Uh, you might have uh, warm highlights and cool shadows. So well, let's get into this and I'll show you how it works. All right, we have this lovely stock image of a barn today. So let's get started. Uh, I added um, AI Clear. I always like to do that. Sharpens it up, gets rid of any noise that's in the image. And I'm going to come up here and click Add Filter. And let's come down to the Creative section here and go to Dual Tone. So let's give that a click. And this opens up the controls for the Dual Tone Filter. Of course, we have our Opacity, our Blend Modes, our Presets. We can save a preset after we've made some adjustments. We may want to save that for future uses. We can come here and click here and save a preset. And of course, we can delete the filter if we decide we don't want to use it after all. So let's get started here. now. Pretty simple filter. You have highlight color and you have shadow color. So you have two sliders here. Now, watch what happens when I adjust the highlight slider to the right. Oh, look, another slider magically pops up onto the screen. That's pretty cool. All right, so this slider says highlight hue. This one says highlight color. So highlight color would be the amount of the particular highlight hue we're adding to the image. And it's only going on to the highlights of the image. And that's pretty neat. All right, so let's just pull that back a little bit. Now, in, in this case, let's pull it up so we can see what's actually happening. Now, the highlight hue, we just drag it to the left or to the right, and we'll go through these different hues. So we can tint our highlights any different hue that we would like here. And we're just looking for some kind of uh, artistic look to our image to give it a little bit more interest. In my case, let's say we want to warm up those uh, highlights a little bit. So maybe right around in there. And we'll come back and alter these again. Now, let's come to the shadow color. When I pull this to the right, a little uh, highlight hue slider will magically appear. So I'm going to move it to the right. And let's bump it up about the same distance that we moved the other one. We'll come back here and tweak these in a second. But this will help me to show you how this high, um, dual tone filter works. So you notice that the shadow hue defaults at this bluish tone right here. And of course, we can drag it through different colors. But let's go to the blue so we can actually see a change here. And I want to show you what this balance does. Now, if I move the balance to the right, we're uh, adding more of the highlight color to the image, to the overall image. If I move it to the left, we're adding more of the shadow color to the image. And so we can take this balance slider and kind of just tweak it and say, what looks good to our eyes? Well, how do we want to balance these two tones? And in this case, I might say right around there looks pretty good. Now, obviously, this is really out there, and I probably wouldn't go with this kind of look. But just for the tutorial's sake, I'm going to go with this little higher effect on the image so, so we can see how these things work. Now, let's just uh, take this highlight color, and let's just move it back to the left and just get it looking kind of nice. And let's take the shadow color and move it to the left and pull some of those blues out of there. And then I can come back here and take this balance again, add a little more warmer tones when I move it to the right, add a little more cooler tones when I move it to the left. So maybe right around there, that looks pretty nice. I like that. That's how simple this filter is to use. Now let's come up here and reset this and let's kind of do something that we would maybe do in an actual situation. So let's reset the dual tone by coming to this little icon here and giving it a click. So now let's start from scratch. Let's take our highlight color and move it to the right to some place we like. And let's find a nice highlight hue that we may want to use. Now, if you don't want to use a highlight hue, you just, you just don't drag the highlight color to the right. You just leave it alone. But let's say maybe right around there. And let's give it a little bit more. Maybe right around there. Now let's go with our shadow color. And let's, let's maybe give it a warmer tone to give this a nice inviting image. So right now, it's defaulted at blue, so let's drag this slider to the left. Let's go into the warmer tones. You know, get that old barn wood looking like old barn wood. Maybe somewhere right around in there. 
Now let's take the shadow color and just drag it to the left a little bit and say, hmm, that looks pretty cool there. And I'm just going to move the balance to the right and left and see if I can find a nice little balance for this image. And right around there. Now let's click in the center of the screen so we can see the before and after. That looks pretty cool. Now we also have the opacity slider. So if we feel we have too much adjustment here, we can take this opacity slider. I like to move it the whole way to the left. Get rid of the adjustment entirely. And now let's just slowly move it up to the right. And say, you know, right there. So let's do a before and after. Let's click in the center of the image. Actually, you can click anywhere in the image and you'll get a before and after. That's a left click of your mouse, by the way, in case you're wondering. So there we go. And that looks pretty nice. Next, we're going to, well, I'm going to demonstrate how you can tint a black and white picture. Let's start off by uh, deleting the dual tone filter. And let's come up to add filter. And let's come to black and white. Let's do a really quick black and white conversion. Let's do a preset. Let's uh, do dark and smooth. And let's try something else. I like that, but let's do red filter. Yeah, I like that. A little bit more contrast in the image. All right. So now we'll come up and click add filter. Let's go down to our dual tone. And let's say we want to go with a nice sepia look to the image. I When I do a sepia tone, I don't like to tint my highlights because it makes your image look older. But if I want a more modern look, I'll leave the highlights alone. I'll just come to the shadow color, move it to the right. And as I move it to the right, you see we have this nice blue tone in the image, which is nice, but I want to put a sepia tint on. So I'm going to move this into the sepia range, which is going to be maybe right around in here. And that looks really, really cool. Now let's just take the shadow color. We can move it up more if we want more, but let's move it back. What if we wanted to take our highlights a different color just for some interest? All right, so now let's add a highlight color. But again, for a sepia tint, I would just leave it just the way it is and save it out. But let's experiment with a highlight color. So let's move our highlight color up to the right. Okay, and it's all, always defaults at this sepia type color right here. So let's add some purplish tones to the highlights. Possibly, maybe, maybe in there. Let's bump up the highlight color a little bit. So maybe somewhere right in there. Let's just play with this hue a little bit. Maybe somewhere in there. Okay, and that might be too much highlight color, so let's back this off a little bit. Maybe somewhere in there. That looks pretty good. Now let's take our balance slider, move it to the right. We're adding more of the purple tones. Move it to the left. We're taking the purple tones out. So let's just find a nice little balancing point. That looks pretty nice right there. Let's click on the center of the image, or anywhere in the image, actually. Left click of the mouse. There's the before and there's the after. So very nice. I like that. And also, we can also come up here to the dual tone right here and click the eyeball right here. And we can see without tint and with tint. So we have two different looks there. And it's just that simple. Oh, yes. One more thing. Let's go back to the dual tone. Let's click on this layer where it says dual tone. And remember, you have the opacity slider. Again, let's pull the opacity the whole way back, getting rid of the tint. And let's just bump it up slowly and find a little spot that we really like. And I'm thinking right there looks a little, little nicer to me. Anyway, for the mood that I'm in right now, I think that looks nice. But you may want it higher. So let's click on the eyeball one more time, before and after. So there it is. Well, that was the dual tone filter. Give that one a try. I really like it. I use it a lot. I use it on my color images. I use it on my black and white images. It's just really a fun filter to work with. And it gives you some, and it gives you some really nice stylized effects to your images. Takes sometimes a bland image and turns it into a great image. And that is really nice. Well, if you like this video today, guys, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please do so and click that bell notification icon. This way you'll be informed of all the new training videos that I'm putting out. Well, thanks for joining me again today on The Joy of Editing with your host, Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time.